One of my favorite bills that passed was Bill S2. And probably nobody knows about that bill because every time I mention it, nobody knows about it, which, which you know, just shocks me that, you know, it was always, you know, so hidden. And that was the Matrimonial Rights Bill for Aboriginal Women and Girls on Reserves. Does anybody know about that bill? Yes. You know about it? Just drove me nuts. You know, it was actually my favorite bill. I put it in my householder, like, this year, you know, to say, wow, I can't believe it's almost four years coming up. And two of my favorite bills... And that's the one of them was, was Bill S2. So what it did was for 30 years, because of a Supreme Court decision, you know, back, uh, we put this through uh, about two years ago, so maybe 28, 29 years. So about, you know, 25 to 30 years ago, the Supreme Court decision made a decision that women would have no rights to the matrimonial property and no rights to um, emergency protection orders. So, you know, if you were going to split up with your spouse, uh, your partner, husband, you know, right now, you know, you would assume if you own the house that you're going to be entitled to half and you will probably go to a lawyer, legal aid or somewhere where you can try to make sure you get half of that. You know, if they don't like it too bad, that's the law here. They had absolutely zilch right. I had one girl that came to committee and uh, she saved up, you know, $100,000 or something, you know, over like her life. And she uh, was, was uh, she had this house built, bought the house with this fellow, not married, and she asked the chief, um, you know, can I, can we sign some type of a paper, you know, so that if something happens and we break off that, you know, I'll have the rights to my house because it's my money. So she signed all this paperwork, which is really a moot point because it's not allowed anyway. So I don't even know why he had her do that. And then sure enough, she split up and he got the house, you know, and she was still paying on that because she didn't want bad credit, if you can imagine. And uh, so anyway, we put this bill through. And, uh, you know, it took us a while, and, and again, actually, both opposition parties voted against it, and the reasoning was they said it wouldn't help all women on every reserve because some are in remote areas. But, you know, I said, if it helped 1,000 women or 2,000 women or 10 women, it's more than what it's helping anyone right now. You know, so we put that bill through, and the other important thing about this bill uh, was not only that you have access to your own home, uh, was that right now, like in the, well, in, in the middle of the night, so if you're, you're being abused in the middle of the night, and uh, you know the police come. You are the one that has to leave, with or without your kids. Not not the not the partner. And now with this bill, it it allows a judge to grant up to ninety days that you can stay in the house, and he has to get out. So it's a huge thing for Aboriginal women and girls. You know, and 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 a lot of organizations, the Aboriginal organizations, didn't support it, and I'm still not clear why, but a lot of them did, and and then. A lot of individual women did too. Like, I'm not sure what the downside is. Like, what is the downside? Like, they have emergency protection orders and, and they have rights to their home. They have the same rights we have now, which they didn't have for almost 30 years. I could not believe it when I told that story. Sometimes when I tell that story, people are in awe because they have no idea that these women were treated like that. You know, it was, it's just amazing. So anyway, that went through about a year and a bit ago. So it, it, should, it should, you know, it, it's in place now. Um, so that was one of my favorite bills. Uh, now, so you wanted to know about funding. So what is available? There's a couple of options uh, if your organization qualifies. Everything's all, always about qualifying, and sometimes it's also about partnerships. At Status of Women, there's a call out for proposals right now. They just uh, put it out about two weeks ago, I think, and it's called Working in Partnership to End Violence Against Women and Girls. <coughs> so that website is women. W O M E N dot G C dot C A. And that's the website I said is really easy to navigate. So if you're looking to do something, you know, in your community that will help or bring awareness to violence against women and girls, you may want to look and see if your organization can qualify. So I'll tell you a bit about it. Proposed projects can address a wide variety of issues related to violence against women and girls, but must include and will be assessed on the following points. Focus on improving and transforming the environment that perpetuates or contributes to violence against women and girls or that puts women and girls at risk. Confirmed key decision makers and community leaders to work towards ending violence against women and girls within the project and potential to create substantial change beyond the life of the project. So sometimes it might be working with um, 
you know, sometimes, like I, I provided funding for the London Abuse Women's Center, and they were working with a project, uh, that actually, that one was on cyberbullying, that was a really good funding project, and they were working with the police, the police was their partner in that, for cyberbullying. So, um, you know, something like this, you know, you might, you might, um, you know, work with the Sexual Assault Center, London Abuse Women's Center, you know, you might, you know, like, I don't know who, who takes the lead if you're even interested in that, but whoever does that, you know, read it over, have your meeting, and see what, what it is you want to do and who you can maybe partner with and, and uh, what you can do about it. So in this call, applicants will need to describe the specific issue you want addressed, why is this issue of a particular importance and relevance in your community, and how the project will help to advance equality for women and girls in Canada. The approach and activities that will be undertaken to address the issue, including how key decision makers and or community leaders will be actively involved, and in short and medium term results the proposed project will achieve, including what sustainable change can potentially be created that will continue be on the life of the project. So when the project's done, because they don't like doing, none of the departments like doing projects that in another year you're going to go, oh, we need money to continue this project every year. It's not a sustainable funding. It's something you do that maybe it's just a short term thing you send, you know, that you make everybody aware in that one year or however long the project is. And then, you know, the project's done and you feel that you've done something. And how it works too is, I mean, they don't say the project was $75,000. You know, they would give you, like if it was a two year project, you know, so they would give you so much money, you know, in the first sort of half of the year, you know, so it's done in clumps and status of women. You're always working with their department and they are really good to work with. They're probably the best. I've had people work with them for sometimes almost a year on things. And then finally, you know, their, their application is, is um, you know, accepted. Because sometimes they just go, yeah, I'd like $200,000, let's make it a three-year project. And, you know, there's so many things. And they're not going to give that type of money to, a pro to an organization that's never had a, a proposal up before. So, you know, you have to make it work for you and make it be viable. And But the, they are really good to work with. Like, they help you work and say, this is not going to work, this will work, the, the number that's on there. Like, they are really good to work with. So the funding available is basically up to $300,000 at the local level, and it's for three, 36 months. So it's a three-year, you know, up to three years. You might want your project to be two. That's one thing. So there's also funding under citizenship and multiculturalism. That website, um, it's, it's really long. I'll give you the shorter version, then you can kind of click to go find it. But it's CIC, which is, which is a Canadian citizenship in the Immigration Department. That's Christopher Alexander's. CIC.gc.ca slash English. So that means like there's one there's a couple different areas of funding. One is not available right now, so it's closed, so it'll probably open up again maybe six months from now. But there is something called the Interaction Events Stream, which provides funding for up to fifteen thousand for events and accepts applications year-round. So it's not a just a one time thing or if you miss the deadline, you know you're out of luck. It's all year round. Status of women is normally all year round too. This call for proposal is just a specific call. The stream, this, the, the one I was just talking about, the, the stream is designed to support events that foster one or more of the following. Intercultural, interfaith understanding, civic memory and pride, respect for core democratic values. And then also in that area, there's settlement and resettlement program funding, community historical recognition program, and there are two interaction funding streams called Project and Events. The Interaction Events stream provides funding to community-based events that foster um, um, respect for core democratic values, civic memory and pride, and understanding of the culture. The primary intention is to create concrete opportunities for interaction among cultural and faith communities. Events should be intended for and open up to all Canadians. We will continue taking actions like these to help create positive, concrete change for women and girls in every region of our country. March 8th, as I said, is International Women's Day, and on this, the final day of Black History Month, let us celebrate the black women, girls and women, past and present, who inspire us and make our country great. And let us celebrate the extraordinary diversity of women and girls in Canada who are opening doors and minds and leading us towards a better future. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.
Thank you.